Pour Marilyn Manson, mais il a commencé avec uh, This Is The New Shit, une euh, des euh, chansons de son nouvel album. Déjà là, tu savais que ça allait. Sérieusement, les fans de Marilyn Manson, c'est vraiment, c'est, c'était, c'était vraiment une messe à laquelle on a, on a assisté vraiment à, la, à une messe. C'était sérieusement, sérieusement, c'est un gourou. Euh, c'est mythique quasiment pour Marilyn Manson. Il y avait des danseuses, euh, ça j'ai bien apprécié. Il y avait, <rire> non, mais c'était, c'était bien fait et j'ai eu la chance de rencontrer Marilyn. Oui, il est plus gentil, Il est plus gentil. Il, il, il était fatigué, par contre, parce que l'entrevue était supposée être avant le spectacle, en fin de compte. Il a déplacé l'entrevue à après le spectacle. C'était vers minuit l'entrevue. Euh, j'ai rencontré un Marilyn Manson assez fatigué, mais très gentil. Il a eu un personnage vraiment intelligent. How are you, Marilyn? I'm exhausted. But good. That was maybe the best crowd I've ever seen. Really? They were they were chanting from the minute the doors opened. Right, start. Yeah, we could have played for hours and it wouldn't have been enough for them. This is your new album, Golden Age of Grotesque, right here. We see your fascination for the 20s, 30s. This cabaret style that we saw tonight as well, Berlin. Is that what, what's it all about? This, this album right here. Well, the record reflects a lot of my personal interests. Um, it wasn't something that I researched so much as something that I've been interested in, and, and my girlfriend is uh, does burlesque, so you know, another inspiration in that sense. But most importantly, I wanted to make a record that was uh, about expressionism, and expressionism was born uh, in that period. And in a time of war, you know, people um, created some of the best and most dangerous art in the face of fear. And uh, ironically, you know, symbolically, it just seemed a lot like uh, how America has been over the past few years. So, in some ways, I found myself being the sort of Marlena Dietrich of my time. The president was shooting bombs overseas, yet I'm a bad guy because I've, I've sang some rock and roll songs. And who's a bigger influence, the president or Marilyn Manson? Dude, I'd like to think me, but I'm going to go with the president. It's like about the Michael Moore movie, Bowling for Columbine. I, I want to know when Michael Moore approached you on the, you know, on the day that he did an interview, was it like any other interview for you? Or you knew it was for a movie and where you didn't know what it was about? The day he interviewed me was the first day I had been back to Denver. You know, since uh, the whole media blamed for Columbine, and my biggest concern was for my safety because there were so many death threats, and I had 20 or 30 undercover police following me around. And it's Mile High Stadium, so it would be easy for someone if they wanted to be a sniper or something like that. So I had to just put that behind me and walk on stage and know that I'll die for what I do. Um, hopefully I won't have to, but that's how much it means to me. When I did the interview, there, there was no name for the movie. He just said he was doing a documentary about um, that school shooting. And um, I talked to him for about two hours, to, you know, and he used a piece that I thought represented me very well. It changed uh, a lot of people's opinions about me. And I think it was importantly, it was important timing when it happened because it led, well, it ended uh, a symbolic battle that I've been fighting for a long time and, and proved that I'm a survivor and I wouldn't be, you know, destroyed for having a different opinion. And it also set the tone for making this new record that, uh, you know, people. Not necessarily understood me more, but realized that I'm an artist and I have an opinion. And, you know, I think it made a lot more people listen to what I had to say this time. When a dude's getting bullied and shoots up the school and they claim it on Maryland and the heroin where Do you feel there's some kind of competition between you and Eminem for the king of shocking or something, you know? Do you feel that there's a competition to you and him? No, not at all. We, what we do is very different, but I think we have the same 
intention sometimes. Um, and, uh, you know, actually when he first was trying to get a record deal at Interscope, he was referring to himself as the rap Marilyn Manson. And um, that's how I first heard of him. You know, and I heard his record before it ever came out. And uh, a lot of times we have the same sense of humor. We just express it in a different way. But uh, I think that between the two of us, we, we cover, you know, he, he hits, he, he hits a, a normal part of America that will never um, understand or will find anything interesting in what I do. And I don't think it's something I ever want to change how I create things to reach that crowd. So it's just being part of the counterculture opinion. You know, we're definitely on the same team in that regard. On n'aura malheureusement pas la chance de voir cette année au francophonie de Montréal et c'est bien dommage.